So here we're going to be going through a sandworm attack simulation, showing from beginning to end how Lumu detects and reports on different phases of an attack like this one. We have a typical scenario for a company that has a SCADA service uh, configured in their internal organization. Um, we're going to see that in this instance, the company has implemented a firewall with typical ports to, to expose normal services, uh, more specifically web services, right? So they have their server in a DMZ that's connected to a LAN. Um, and in that DMZ, you're going to see the public IP address within the network. And we have the Lumu appliance in that internal network. And it's going to be overseeing and monitoring all of the activities that are occurring within the firewall logs connecting to the public IP and the internal network. Um, generally speaking, attackers are going to try to exploit vulnerabilities they find on you know, their attack surface in order to compromise systems or gain unauthorized access to sensitive information. So in this case, we're going to be um, with the approach involving leveraging vulnerabilities that have been identified in anywhere, which is a backup system utilized for managing cloud backups. So that's going to be this example. Um, we've also identified a uh, CVE that specifically targets in this vulnerability, uh, providing an exploit for gaining privilege access through an attack and exploitation of the uh, vulnerability, right? So in order to proceed, what we're going to do is run the simulation of the attack here. So we're going to analyze the attacks uh, in detail. So we're going to see the main exploit that ex occurred here. That's what we're running here. And the main goal of that is really just to breach or compromise the system, starting from a vulnerable point and gradually gaining access to sensitive information, uh, posing a threat to the security and integrity of, of this system, right? Um, what you're seeing here, that, two, that CVE 2023 is a critical vulnerability. So our fo focus here is going to be monitoring the Lumu portal for any signs of the attacker's connection to the system's backup port, which is going to be designated as, as port 8000. So this is vital for um, evaluating the system security and implementing the safeguards that we need to mitigate the risk. Um, that occurrence is connected to the Sandworm family and more specific to the uh, threat actor, right? So upon closer examination of the incident, you're going to see it becomes pretty evident that the incident is referenced on a label specifically intended for our SCADA server in this particular example, the way that we labeled it for the demo. Um, you also see that the incident pertains to the same connection utilized uh, by the attacker to gain unauthorized access to that go anywhere system, the one we mentioned earlier. So this time the action is path true, path through, pass through, <laughs> because purely for demo purposes, in a second action, it would already be blocked by Lumu, but we have um, taken that out so that we can just do, you know, for the, for the flow of the demo and to be able to go through all these steps, we're allowing everything to pass through, so we're not blocking anything. Now, next thing that we're going to be doing is moving on to the other steps of the attack, right? We're activating the uh, the, the next steps of that. So here, what we're going to do is we observe in the LAN that there's a multitude of users in a regular corporate network, but there's also a micro SCADA server that controls the entire SCADA environment. So Lulu is currently maintaining surveillance on the connection between the adversary's infrastructure and the regular corporate infrastructure to ensure ongoing you know, security and, and safety of the network, right? So everything the attacker does from their computer will be replicated as if it were here on the internal network. Um, so the next step of the process here is gonna be implementing the tunnel that is currently underway. Um, so we'll have the ability to view it in the portal um, into taking into account really the, what the attacker has to do to uh, to download the PHP tunnel artifact from an adversarial infrastructure and then establish that connection to our network to leave it there, right? So what this exploit does really is exploit the vulnerability in the backup system. In the web interface, it's going to create a, a PHP tunnel. So that's um, what you're going to see there. Now, okay, so now here in the portal, we could see a new incident carried out the artifact of what the attacker downloaded into our system to execute the tunnel. So from this point forward, um, what you're going to see is that all of the traffic is going to be redirected to our internal network. That's that's kind of what's going on at this point. And this type of artifact is referred to as a socket proxy. So essentially it utilizes pre-established uh, sockets to redirect the traffic 
Um, so then the following stage of the attack then entails the attacker who's already positioned um, to get the, the devices that are connected to the internal network to then proceed with, with their attack. And then from that list of devices, they're gonna identify uh, something vulnerable that could be used to carry out the attack. So really what you're doing here is send a network scan in order to identify that the devices are connected to the network. So what we do here is we check, um, it performs like a network mapping um, and map scan that goes through a, an application used to replicate the attacker's network traffic to the internal network through a proxy server. So this is kind of the process that it follows now. And this helps us analyze and identify potential vulnerabilities in the system, ensuring um, you know, the, there's the security measures in place, right? So let's analyze how the, the command is executed here. You're going to see also that, that the attacker utilizes another tool in the proxy change for the, task, uh, the tasks and responsibilities there. The tool creates that proxy interface for all actions performed on the user's machine. And as we can see in the scenario, the traffic from 127.0101, it goes through the tunnel, which is already configured into our infrastructure, right? The proxy chain is responsible for replicating the commands executed in the local applications like Nmap and the corporate network um, of the victim system. So what you're going to see upon investigation is that we've confirmed that it is capable of identifying that micro server equipment, specifically the one that we can observe here with the IP address that 1031, you know, 10 with the several open services that it provides there. So really, uh, the attacker has already identified precisely which they will be pointing for the vector, uh, their starting point for the vector to disable a SCADA network. And they have determined the specific ports to which they can direct the attack. A security management platform, a remote desktop protocol, you know, RDP are utilized, meaning that there is an open remote desktop so we can examine, um, you know, what's, what's happening there. The, the, University monitoring malware monitoring unit to observe um, how the scan is conducted by by the attacker and how that can be visualized. So the details are not clear here, but it's worth noting that the DS three one hundred team is responsible for initiating that scan. So in this scenario, it's pertaining to the server that the attacker utilized as the gateway, resembling a tunnel. Its functionality and purpose. So that's what it's. Uh, done with the entire infrastructure. So the next step we're going to do here in the engagement chain is to gain access to the micro status server moving along the SCADA server. So we're going to attempt to make an exploit with the goal of debilitating and disabling everything that is located behind that server. So this is an important part of the process to ensure that the security of the system and prevent any potential vulnerabilities from being exposed or uh, exploited. So as we see here, the SCADA network is effectively isolated, but it will always have an intermediate point, a proxy that will communicate it between the rest of the world and its external infra internal infrastructure, rather. Um, even though it may seem like its SCADA environments are not completely isolated, uh, the actions performed by the attacker is to download malicious software onto this computer. So as we previously observed, the computer had ports for the RDP server and the uh, server message block, the SMB. So the attacker aims to exploit these vulnerable ports and gain unauthorized access to the system using various techniques, such as, you know, Cobalt Strike, for example. So with the team, you're going to hear download, um, and we see some lateral movement happening here. So at this point, we don't have much vulnerability, but we can see as the attackers inside the team and attempts to download some artifacts in order to continue the attack chain and carry out further malicious activities. But that's what we can really see there. So. The attacker is, has an ISO point in an adversarial infrastructure. And so what they do is while they're inside that micro SCADA server, they make a query to download that ISO point. What that ISO point is you know, aiming to do, um, really it has compressed files and embedded files and some other artifacts that it's gonna use to, you know, in the future to carry out the attack. So if we understand it, you know, in that download link of malicious artifacts, we have the ability to see it later in the Lumu portal once it becomes accessible for viewing. Uh, let's give it a second. 
All right, so as you can see here, we have the, the new incident here taking place in the portal. We observe the attacker use that internal infrastructure to download the artifacts and that Luma was able to identify the exact location it comes from and associate it with a sandworm attack chain, as you can see. Um, providing you know good insight into the nature of the attack, understanding you know what it's all about. Um, it becomes pretty pretty evident here that the main focus lies on the request, specifically the request that was made by the attacker with the intention of downloading the artifact labeled artifacts.iso from the system. Now, during the next stage, the attacker who's already in control of the machine has, obta has obtained and downloaded artifacts, initiates an operation to exfiltrate the configuration files with the ultimate goal of extorting or selling that valuable data in the future. Um, really, this step is crucial to maximize their gains and exploit the compromised system to its fullest potential, to as much as they can get from it, um, so that they can have a profitable outcome, right? That's the goal. Um, so, and then from there, you know, the eradication of the microstatus server configuration, um, its purpose is to fully disable it, thereby, you know, rendering the SCADA environment completely useless and non-operational, really. Uh, when the filtration is carried out, um, you know, in this case, the attacker is going to use a technique called DNS tunneling, which through, you know, encoded subdomains carries out the filtration of the information, and Lou has the ability to detect these kind of techniques. Um, so let's take a look at what we did in stage five. And we're going to see here. The attacker um, utilizes specific techniques for exfiltration via TNS tunneling. And this behavior will be reflected in the, in, in the portal, right? Uh, providing evidence of the unauthorized activity taking place precisely, maintain it in its current state at this specific location and affirm that here is the incident with all the requests that have been made, right? And here it is with the finalized product, everything that you see there. All of the requests have been made to the specific domain, uh, made use of the encoded subdomain. So the capability possesses uh, is to group it and leave it as DGA. So, all right, let's... So from here, let's assume that the final stage of the attack takes place when the attacker has successfully gained entry into the network, conducts scans, compromises a server, um, obtains information from both servers exposed to the internet and the internal server, exfiltrates the configuration data, and proceeds to delete the server, rendering the the that all you know unus unusable, really. So this is precisely what Sandworm uh, executed in this particular case showcasing the severity and the impact of the attack and the targeted infrastructure and erasing all the information so we don't perceive that here but it is in the last you know it is the last stage of the attack really so um here you've had the opportunity to observe how lumu has been able to uh, despite being an isolated network verify connections that the attacker makes when they have to download or execute from distant stages of the attack through the tunnel um so that is our uh, sandworm simulation um, we hope you enjoyed.